you know, they were giving a Batman mask. Like I think the early, early access to the, to the movie, they actually gave the cows the Batman mask. Okay. That's all, we have our own Batman <laughs> masks. I'm vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, uh, wow, we're all back again. Uh, finally, uh, Backspace Nerds is finally back together again. Uh, it's been a while. I guess we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're doing a movie review time. And what movie are we reviewing today? Sandy, tell us what movie. Batman. The Batman, baby. It's movie review time. Let's do it. Backspace Nerds to the Movies, giving the latest reviews, ratings from nerd glasses to pocket protectors, giving in-depth opinions, Backspace Nerds to the Movies. Welcome to Backspace Nerds, myself, Sandy Kirkman, Bobby Torres. We all just came back uh, from seeing the Batman. It's fresh. It's fresh. All of our takes are pretty fresh. Um, we have a lot going on. I think the order is usually it's Sandy, Bobby, me. So we're going to just go right into it. The way we do our reviews is Sandy does uh, nerd glasses and me and Bobby do pocket protectors. Uh, we rate out of five. So, um, you know, obviously five out of five means that it's great. One out of five means that it's nothing. We haven't yet to review a movie that's five out of five. Uh, we did all do four uh, for Spider-Man um, No No Way Home. Is it No Way Home? <laughs> Wish I went to see that movie. <laughs> I'm fairly sure I gave Army of the Dead five. <laughs> I think she no did. No way you gave Army of the Dead five. Uh, in honor of Batman, I have the uh, Arkham Manor right here. Um, okay. Art piece uh, by the great Sean Crystal. Uh, beautiful, beautiful art piece. Uh, awesome. Behind me of Arkham Manor. Uh, anyway. Hold so on, Sandy. I Sandy. said don't think you deserved it. Exactly. Is he, is he deserving it? Okay. Sandy, go, let's let's do it. Go go right into it. Why don't you start first? Because <laughs> this is the order we do. And you always say, I don't want to start with me first. We always do this. It's been a very long day. And we went to watch this movie on its first day of release. Not the premiere. We didn't get invited to the premiere, but we yeah. made it. Yeah. We didn't get the premiere. IMAX. You know, they were giving a Batman mask. Like I think the early, early access to the to the movie, they actually gave the cows the Batman mask. Okay. That's all. We have our own Batman <laughs> masks. I'm vengeance. <laughs> Before all of this, I just wanted to say there are really two people that I care about in Hollywood. <laughs> one is Timothy Chalamet and the other one is our Pats, Robert Pattinson. One is Timothy Chalamet and the other one is our Pats, Robert Pattinson. Probably the primary reason why I wanted to watch the Batman. I don't really know much about Batman. I know he's no um, ordinary superhero like the Superman or ant-man or thor he's more of like <laughs> the dark darker version of the superhero type um i thought it was slightly emo <laughs> yeah. Yeah. uh it was look from again i'm sorry but i i fell asleep three times the movie was really <laughs> long I must say the first time I fell asleep was when he first met Catwoman or pre-Catwoman uh, in in the club. I fell asleep, so I don't know how they met after the club. <laughs> so, anyway, when I woke up, they were already friends. <laughs> uh, I, I guess this is kind of like the, the pre-Catwoman. So she had, well, actually, no, I didn't like it. I, I thought it was a little bit funny because it looked like a, just a piece of cloth. <laughs> It wasn't um, the black leather that I'm used to. Uh, not quite Catwoman yet. So assuming there's going to be a sequel after this, her character was definitely still developing into the Catwoman. So that was really cool. I thought that having Robert Pattinson in this movie wouldn't make me fall asleep, but I really truly did fall asleep three times. And when I wake up each time, I couldn't wait for the movie to end. <laughs> 
good. I must say it was a good movie, right? I think they put a lot of effort into it. It was a, it was an entertaining movie. It just went for too long. I, I wish I had, I wish I could pause in the middle and come back to it the next day for me to appreciate it more. Um, it, it, it's it's a my it's a me thing. It's not it's not the movie's fault, or it could be the movie's fault. <laughs> um, and lastly, what's really funny was um, Nirvana. The song um, uh, "Something in the Way" came up a couple of times, and I can't stop but think it sounded exactly one like one of it sounded exactly like one of the soundtracks from Twilight. <laughs> it was it was a little bit emo, but. It was cool. They they had the old Nirvana stuff. Yeah. It was the same song that got played twice. I thought there were parts that were extremely funny. I, I really enjoyed some of the jokes that um, they had throughout the movie. I wish I could remember them. Overall, I think it was a good movie. I It was exactly what I expected. I'm going to give it a three and a half stars. Three and a half nerd glasses. So, yeah, three and a half, three nerd, and a half glasses. nerd glasses. Three and a half nerd glasses for Sandy. She thought the movie was a little long, but uh, enjoyed some of the characters, the jokes. Of course, Robert Pattinson. And the... It looks like you enjoyed the emo-ness, but you may have believed that it was a little too emo, but you still enjoyed some of it. So thank you for that uh, three and a half nerd glasses. Uh, Bobby, I'm... Um... I'm dying to hear what you got to say about uh, this film because he had several reactions inside the movie theater. During I apologize this. for disrupting your, your visual pleasure of watching the movie during uh, <laughs> the movie. But I couldn't help it. That was my natural reaction. So look, right now it's March 5th, right? It's 12.25 a.m. We're fresh out the theater. Let's fast forward, right? It's December, right? It's December 10th, right? 2022, right? It's 4 p.m right? Or 7 p.m. And I'm going through the channel guide, right? I'm going guy, through the where are you going? Through the channel guide. Listen, I'm going through the channel guide, right? <laughs> and I see the Batman 2022. And then right below it, I see uh, the news. CNN. I passed uh, the Batman and I watched the news. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm going to say that the, the movie was made with quality. We can we can all agree with that, right? The movie was made with quality. I have to admit, Robert Patterson, he, Pattinson, he, he, he won me over. He was a good Batman. He was a good Batman. Zoe, phenomenal. She was a great Catwoman. <laughs> and Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I mean, come on. He he nailed that character. A, you know, it was a bit mobsterous, but it was perfect. It was, it was perfectly executed. The acting was good, right? Well, what were the writers thinking? Like, <laughs> it, it, it became the crow, like the you guess, narration monologue became the crow, right? And then, and then you know, Robert Pattinson, he, he saved uh, the image of the Batman, but when you looked at him in the beginning of the movie, he looked like a villain. He looked like a bad guy, right? And then when he spoke, he spoke like a bad guy. But when he said something and you listen, you realize he was a good guy, right? It took me a while to get convinced that this was Batman initially. It just took me a while, but he executed it. And it's not because of the acting, it's because it was poorly written. Now let's go further. I was having a hard time figuring out what time frame we were in. You know, and I think you said it when we when we when we uh, when we stepped out the theater. 1980s police vehicles, mid 90s taxi vehicles and Maseratis. So I'm trying to figure out where are, you know, where's where's the time and place with this movie? Where, wh when am I watching here? And then Twitter hits, right? And then you got posting and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and then you got a 1980 vehicle going by, right? And I'm not talking, spoiler, I'm not talking about the Batmobile, right? It was cool, you know what I mean? I like I liked how they did that whole vintage ramped up look on that vehicle, talking about background, you know, all this stuff that you have to kind of get your mind into to see where is the tempo, where is, wh what's the feeling of this movie? This movie gave me no feeling. I did not feel excited. I did not feel tense. I did not feel uh, as if, as if I was waiting for the climax to hit and I was waiting for the punchline. It became muffled when it got really, what, what I believe they were trying to execute uh, exciting suspense. It, it was just lost in translation. You know, it became one climax point that they tried to accomplish to another one, to another one. It was quite confusing. They, they took great actors because they did, took great actors and they did not do them justice. They did not give them the right narrative, the right time frames, the right anything. Um, I was really disappointed, right? Not 
you know, not to say that it was not a well-made movie, but I know for a fact that I'm not watching this movie again. And wow. if there's a Batman part two, I'm not going to go to the theaters. And we're what? Not, we're not, no, it's not. Wow. Happening. And, and, and say, say this, right, Anthony, Sandy, wow. all the other Batman that were made for the exception of, you know, Batman and Superman. Let's take that one out. But all the other Batmans that were made, right, were all better than this one. I all have not seen the other Batman. You know, the, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I ha- the Scarecrow Batman to me was better than this one. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, you know, B- Bane was better. You know, they created a, a, a an antagonist that's not even in the comics, like 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 Catwoman's father, who she didn't know who was the father, and he's the guy leading this mob world. I like that the, the New York City ramp of of Gotham, like you know Gotham Square Garden. Like I like the way they took a real place and they made it something when the water was you know flooding Gotham. Not even something that could actually even happen. I, I was just lost. So if I'm gonna rate this, this is a two out of five, and it's, and I'm giving it a two because it was it was Ow. decent actors, decent actors who really tried a two and quality in terms of how it was. Wait made. a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold on a second. You're I, telling I, I, me I, that Space Jam two I was gonna say the same is thing. better than the Batman? I have to rate the movie four to five. Wow. wow wait a minute so Sorry, you're saying it's that it's great. better than black widow wow it's better than black widow. Oh. whoa Get because ready. you rated space I jam 2 a awesome. three i was hoping you was gonna say that <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my god so you went on a whole space. rant about this planet and that planet you were in another planet when you were watching <laughs> that film and you are seriously saying that that film was better than this one Ah, that's a shock. I'm, wow. and I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that that film was better made in terms of quality. I, I think the quality of the Batman was done right. The costumes look cool. The, the acting was good. Even, even the fact that they had the wrong vehicles in the wrong time frame, even the vehicles look good. It just did not work. The continuity was broken. It was. So, so Bobby essentially loved the look of a movie, but he doesn't mind the, he doesn't care about the acting because he loves LeBron James acting. Oh, <laughs> you got that, man. Yeah. Two, LeBron two. James is like, t- oh my God. That movie's two horrible. Pocket protectors. And you Absolutely know, and listen, terrible. to my defense, I didn't say LeBron James was a great actor. I said nostalgia, and I said the stars of that movie were the Looney Tunes. Remember that. Okay, so Bobby gives it two pocket protectors out of five. Thought the movie was too long, poorly written is pretty much his overall gist of the film. So now it is my turn to go on with the film. And as normal, I always do the good first and then I end with the bad, I believe. Matt Reeves is the director of this film. And Matt Reeves has done some really good films over the years. You know, uh, if you know about the Planet of the Ape movies, He's done a very amazing job putting together that that world. And he also did well with doing that here as well. Dark world. It, you know, it was really gritty. It was really dark. Sort of missing in the Batman universe, you know, of films. I mean, I, I guess since Tim Burton did it um, in 89 Batman, where you had that really gritty, like, dirty Gotham, you know? Uh, the acting was done really well. Uh, they had a lot of great actors in there. Zoe Kravitz, you had Robert Pattinson. So Jeffrey Wright, who played uh, uh, Gordon, Colin Farrell, who played Penguin, uh, Paul Dano, who played Riddler, John Turturro, who played uh, Falcone, and of course, Andy Serkis, who played Alfred, Peter Sarsgaard was in there. I mean, there's a lot of great actors in here. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, you questioned me, Bobby, like who, who is the guy from the Riddler? Paul Dano has been acting for a long time period of time um most notably you know he was in there will be blood he was in looper as well but anyway so he played the riddler and there was a nice little take on the riddler as well there were some really cool moments that i have written down that's why i keep looking over here and i'll and i'll and i'll list them um so when catwoman uh appeared the music that was used um you know again film is my my passion i love it especially nostalgia so um, I don't know if this is purposely done or not, but if you listen to the, the film music when Catwoman comes, because each sometimes in these types of films, each character has their own score. Um, it's very, very, very reminiscent of the Batman Returns music. There's a scene where at the end of Batman Returns, Michael Keaton is inside of his car and he's leaving and he sees a cat walking along the snow and he... 
uh, he basically he it's it's just sign that Catwoman is still alive. And in there, there's a slight little theme music that plays, and they put hints of that in her Catwoman music. When he first sees her, when he's in the club and he's questioning Penguin and he looks at her through the glass into the other glass, she's, she's, she looks up and there are clothes hanging. And I, I swear that the way the clothes were hanging, it had a symbol of a cat, which, is, which was also very similar to the cat symbol used in Batman Returns. Um, I, I swore I noticed that. I'd have to go back to the movie to, to, to picture that. The Iceberg Lounge and 44 Below. This may be references to Mr. Freeze. You know, like, they, why, why mention these things that are freezing temperatures? So it could be a nod to Mr. Freeze's character, you know, somehow in there as well. I thought that his fly suit, when he zipped up his, his flight suit, I thought that was pretty cool because, you know, instead of putting these bat wings that fly, which makes no sense, a flight suit actually would work if you jump off a tall yeah. building like that. And the fact that he landed and he smashed into a car and he flipped and he hurt himself was super accurate. You know, if you're pulling a parachute in the middle of a city, you're going to hurt yourself. You know what I mean? So I thought that was uh, uh, that that was pretty cool. Uh, when uh, Bruce Wayne enters Falcone's, Falcone's playing pool. The window that's shown was very, very similar to the Batman Forever window where the Riddler is working, um, Jim Carrey's Riddler, and that look, especially that whole little area, very, very similar to the Batman film of 1989 where Jack Nicholson's Joker appears for the first time. Again, these are just things that I noticed. The Riddler, after he shot Falcone and they went to visit the house. The vibe of that scene was very, very similar to the movie Seven, um, which was with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. They're like discovering these books with all of these, uh, you know, um, writings and journals and they're like going through his room. I almost felt like that scene should have been earlier in the film. They should have technically kind of caught him or went and found that early in the film because then it would have been like this real kind of detective story. The bad part, I thought the movie was way too long. Matt Reeves was establishing these like long sequence shots because he was trying to build this vibe, I feel, of the film. And it was just, it just hung on too long. You could have edited all of that down and could have made this film two hours or two and a half hours. It was raining almost every single day. What is this, Seattle, uh, <laughs> Washington? I mean, it was raining every single day in there. I mean, it was raining everywhere. Rain, 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 rain. It was super dirty. Like, I know, I understand it was grindy and dirty, but it was like really dirty. Like, it was like the dirtiest city I've ever seen in my life. Again, when Bobby mentioned it to me while we were in the theater, I was like, what time frame are we in? I couldn't help but notice that the police cards and the cabs were box cars from the 80s and early 90s, yet I saw Maseratis and Teslas, and I just thought that that, I was like, you know, he's right, this doesn't make any sense. It's fine if there are 80s and 90s cars that are just driven and the Batmobiles looks like a 69 Camaro or whatever it is, that's fine, but when you use police vehicles and cabs, it almost it showcases the time period. They could have went the Blade Runner route. Futuristic technology, but done in like a 80s way, you know, like retro wave or synth wave style. Or they could have done the Mad Max route 
where it's like future, but they use really old stuff. I didn't, it, I couldn't get a distinct path of where they were going with. The mayor got shot, but when Batman was helping her, she's like grabbing his arm and like crawling through the debris. Like what, do we forget that she got shot? I just don't understand what's happening here. Laughing when he, did the, when he said that there was this crow monologue going through it. The acting was great. I thought that Colin Farrell's portrayal was actually really good. I thought uh, Catwoman's portrayal was really good. I thought all of them was really good. I like this Batman, I do. I like Batman better than Ben Affleck. I'll be honest, I really do. Yeah, 100%. Um, the last scene, I'm sorry, spoiler alert. I'm gonna put the spoiler alert on this, but Joker, God, what kind of joker was that? He looked <laughs> like if he, I'm trying to get the character in head. He looked like Waluigi. <laughs> if you know Waluigi, he has the nose and the hat. He looked like Waluigi was in there. It wasn't the joker. This was, this was a cross between Batman and Mario Brothers. What happened at the end of this? I don't know who the actor was that was that was playing it, but please, God, that was terrible. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, Bobby mentioned that when he slammed the adrenaline into himself and he got all angry or whatever, he was like, Bobby was like, what is happening here? I don't really have a problem with him shooting adrenaline on him. I mean, I get it. He's like doping up or something. <laughs> He's roiding up. I don't know what that was. Well, but... but he hit that poor guy, you know, who, Vengeance. I'm assuming that's his name, right? Uh -huh. At least 10 times. And then they pulled him off and the guy was fine. He was just laughing. Like, <laughs> oh, what I did like though is the disaster effect it wasn't like batman could save the day it was people still dead like dying like there was there was a yeah. flood like you couldn't stop it that's what i thought was really cool towards the end i started out with like a four when they were building up the batman but as the movie got longer like especially the last half an hour like points were starting to get deducted like really quickly <laughs> especially when the joker started showing i was like what is going it was like ping, 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 ping. <laughs> bing, bing. Like it was going down. I would say that out of five, I'm gonna have to still. It, it was not better than Spider Man. I have to give this a three and a half. That's Ooh. what I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna I'm give. Uh, I'm gonna give this a three and a half stars. Um, Do you think that this Batman was the most vulnerable Batman? How Batman would really live, even though he's a normal person, doesn't have superpowers or anything like that. He always felt like he can easily task anything. But in this this version of Batman, it felt like it was challenging, and he really had to figure it out. He was emo. You know, obviously Ben Affleck's Batman was like this super. You know, he had like the suit. You couldn't even stop him. Like you know, he would go against Superman. Christian Bale's Batman portrayed a little bit of both. This Batman was like really beaten. Like he just, he had, he had no care for his own life. I, at one point while I was watching it, I said to myself, he's not even portraying the Bruce Wayne at all in this. Elegance, the yeah. rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this guy just didn't do it. What what I didn't understand is that, the, you know, they at least pointed, they did a nod to like, listen, you need to hold up appearances or whatever. But the next scene, he's driving his car to the funeral. <laughs> if you're holding up appearances, Bruce Wayne does not drive his own car to a place. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. I don't know about the other Batman, but I thought this Batman was well done in terms of they made him into a proper investigator. He was a, he was a detective. That's pretty much what his character is, right? Yeah. He's not really a superhero uh, in terms of, you know, the Superman and, and all that superpower, you know, almost unrealistic superpowers, right? He, he was just human and an extra half of my nerd glasses if the romance was better. For some reason, I felt like Robert Pattinson liked Zoe Kravis, but not enough. It's kind of like, hey, come come here, but don't come here. I didn't feel that yeah. romance chemistry yeah. like I had seen, you know, with Zendaya, with Tom Holland. Obviously, they're actually dating in real life, but... Try to move it too fast. See, another nod, I believe, to Batman Returns, um, when she, uh, Zoe Kravitz, grabs his head and she goes, you know, who's, you know, what's underneath it, it's very similar to michelle pfeiffer when she did that to michael keaton follow up to that she sticks him in the gut with her nail but you know in this one she didn't do that but she did almost the exact same setup i always felt like batman felt that regardless of how close he gets with catwoman she's always a threat to him mm -hmm. and and i didn't feel that he felt like she was a threat to him i just felt like he felt like she was a threat to anything he's trying to accomplish it didn't it, it didn't feel like he was worried about her. I, I wasn't comparing them to the uh, the Batman Returns, but now that I think about it, Michelle Pfeiffer and Mike King did a great job of showing that they liked each other, but couldn't be with each other. You know what I mean? Like it, it was too dangerous for both of them. I think it's fair to say next time we'll watch a movie that is less than two hours. 
<laughs> well, for you, for you, it doesn't matter because you fell asleep three times, so you really saw only an hour no, and a half. No, if it's like <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, I will be awake. Even I, I, I don't need a nap. I don't. I can work all day and still you be know, awake. Willy Wonka with you. Yes, Willy Wonka when it comes <laughs> out, but that's twenty twenty three. God. So, so, so Mandy pretty- fell asleep so many times that she actually saw a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Penguin. I thought oh, he was, Penguin, absolutely. I thought he was a little too mobsterish. I would like to have hear a quack or something in there, but, <laughs> but I wanted him to be like, hey. you know, like hey. you're waiting for like a Willem Dafoe kind of character to yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> no, you got the other one. Do the mobster one. Do 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 Which uh, one? Thing. Colin Farrell. Yeah. It's like, hey, what do you do? <laughs> like, you guys don't know what the difference between L and L is. What are you guys crazy? <laughs> so that about wraps it up. And so you know, you heard from all of us uh, and what we had to say about this in the recap. Sandy gives it a three and a half nerd glasses out of five nerd glasses. Bobby gives it now a two and a half because he yeah. added the half of pocket protectors. And then I am giving it a three and a half pocket protectors out of five. He was really dark. Uh, and um, the Joker was utterly ridiculous. I think <laughs> we can all agree with that. Too long. But anyway, so that's it for Backspace Nerds. Hopefully we can give you something again soon. Uh, but how about we give out our handles, Bobby? Comic books underscore N underscore art or pack pull TCG. And Sandy? Two ND pants. And at Backspace Nerds. And then for myself, it is Anthony Pizarro underscore. And so that's it for us. Thank you. You know, continue to like, subscribe, and share. Share this, man. I'm telling Please. you, man, we do it for us. We do openings, we act stupid, um, and we're gonna start doing more we different types stupid. of things. We're gonna start watching more. We're gonna be doing reaction videos. We're gonna start watching like YouTube clips and start reacting to those things. We'll do a, a science uh, theater 3000 deal where we'll mute the movie and then we will just speak for the characters. Do it, yeah. I, I've done that before in the past with uh, my family and that's always fun. For all of us, Thank you, and we will see you in the future. Nerds out with the Zed.